G'day everybody and welcome to weeks 11 and 12 of my OSCP update. Now as the title suggests, uh, I'm now starting to finish up the OSCP course slash labs. So I thought it would be fun to have a look at everything that's involved, how many hours I put in, the progress and the rate in which I completed the uh, lab exercises and the machines. And I thought it might just be a bit of fun to have a look back, see how far I've come and maybe give you some idea of how long this course will actually take you to complete. Now, keep in mind, this is, you know, based off my experience, my background knowledge and everything like that. So obviously your mileage may vary, but it's, it's a bit of fun and it might give you a ballpark figure of how long you're looking at. Now, as you probably know, I've been recording my hours the whole time uh, that I've been doing this course. And that's primarily just to hold myself accountable to make sure that I'm putting in the required effort. After talking to a friend who is uh, very data hungry, I've decided to put these in a couple of graphs. So as you can see on this graph, I've basically maintained a trend of at least 40 hours per week for the entire time. There have been a few dips and that's primarily due to work getting busy. And there's a few uh, peaks where obviously work has been quite free. So I've been able to put in a lot more time. I'm currently in week 11 and I've only put in about 25 hours. And that's because I've been facing a bit of burnout. Plus I've pretty much done everything. Uh, the only things that I have left are Alpha, Beta, Gamma, which is reserved for my practice exam, which is more so just to get me in the uh, mindset and get me accustomed to doing a 24 hour sort of setting. Now, as you can see, I've completed about 440 hours so far. I'm expecting this probably to hover up about the 500 hours mark by the time that I take the exam. Um, and that will include supplementary material. So I've purchased the Windows and Linux uh, privilege escalation courses on Udemy from uh, Tiberesk. I can't remember his exact name. Uh, Lowe's will be linked below anyway. Now onto the following graph, we can see more so my progression over time. So as I mentioned before, I've, I chose to do the lab exercises as tedious and annoying as they were. And this is what everything looks like. So the blue is the lab exercises, and this is just more so marked as a binary option. But it took about 18 days to do all the lab exercises before I got started on the course. Uh, so as you can see, then my uh, progress went quite rapid, um, sometimes getting two, four, or even five machines in a single day. Towards the end that you'll see that I picked up the labs again, uh, so around here, and that was to do the buffer overflow section. This was always my plan to leave buffer overflows till last. It only took me about two days to do the buffer overflow machines, but I've had to fix up a lot of labs or just missing some exercises entirely because you just get a giant PDF and it's very easy just to skip over a potential exercise. I also did all the extra mile buffer overflows. All of those were quite easy. So as you can see here, I've still got a lot of time left over. I think I had about close to two weeks of time left over uh, before finishing everything. I'm doing my practice exam next week. So in the meantime, I'm not gonna be doing OSCP uh, material, but the Privess course and Ipsex list of Hack the Box machines. So all in all, this just basically gives you a bit of a rundown of how much effort is required to do the OSCP. I think a ballpark figure of saying 500 hours is quite realistic because the exercises of sex say uh, it should be about 100 hours to do. And in my my experience, that's pretty much on, on point. So other than that, my exam is booked and scheduled. I won't be revealing that publicly. Um, though I will very openly tell you guys if I fail or not, I'm not afraid of failure. I think failure can actually be a good thing as you will go back and learn more. And the way I truly see it, failure is giving up altogether. It doesn't matter how, how long it takes you to pass. That being said, I'm feeling very confident that I'll be able to score at least 60 points in the exam. Very confident for the buffer overflow. I've got my lab report, so that brings me up to 30. 
uh, confident to do the 10 pointer, so that's 40, and then confident to do a 20 pointer, which is 60. I'm not sure how I feel with Windows and Linux privilege escalation, but I think I would at least be able to tackle one of them during the exam. My main concern in the exam is that there is uh, a lot of rabbit holes, so I've heard uh, things aren't as simple as what you find in the lab machines. The privilege escalation method typically isn't staring you blankly in the face like it is on most of the lab machines, and you really have to enumerate well and be able to weed out the rabbit holes. Um, so that's something that I'd like to get a bit more practice on, and I'm hoping Hack the Box will have some machines that are very much in that style. So that's about it from me for today. Thanks for watching. Obviously I'm feeling much better having uh, taken some time out and finishing all the labs and exercises. It's just a massive burden off my shoulders. Looking forward to keep doing some hack the box, those privilege escalation courses and to finally start the exam. Anyway, as always, I hope you have found this video somewhat insightful or helpful. Uh, feel free to leave any comments below and I'll get around to answering those and, you know, subscribe, like, all that good stuff and I'll see you in the next one.